uh, in this module on DC motor drives, uh, we will look at uh, their classification, their structure, uh, basic operating principle, a uh, little bit about armature reaction, and we'll end up with this uh, DC machine equivalent circuit. So just a little bit of introduction that uh, in uh, DC drives, the cost of uh, the motor itself is uh, uh, higher as compared to AC drives. So the motor cost is here, whereas in AC drives, uh, the motor cost is over here, but uh, the power processing cost is uh, lower. Uh, so the, here's the power processing cost here and here, and uh, you can see that uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, this power processing cost is going down, and therefore AC machines are becoming uh, more competitive here, but uh, are competitive here, uh, and more competitive. That's a fair statement to say. And but the, the demise of uh, DC ma machines and drives has been prematurely predicted. They are still used uh, in speed control, and uh, they are still uh, manufactured. So. <clears throat> There are certain merits in DC machines. Uh, one is ease of control and cheaper power processing unit, but the major drawback is that we have mechanical commutator and brushes, and uh, this then requires uh, maintenance. But uh, uh, for, um, the reason for us to study uh, DC machines is that we try to emulate the performance of AC machines uh, to match that uh, of DC machines. So. Uh, it's uh, somewhat important for us to understand <coughs> how DC machines uh, uh, work or what their uh, uh, functional uh, operating characteristics are. So in terms of classifying these uh, DC drives, uh, we have an electrical source and a mechanical system over here. And uh, certainly between the, the two, we have DC machine here and also this power processing unit here. So uh, this power processing unit could be uh, made up of switch mode converters. I'm sorry, here. This power processing unit may be uh, made up of switch mode converters or uh, line commutator thyristor converters. Uh, by and large, now it's really the switch mode converter that is used and uh, as far as the DC machine is concerned, the DC machine may have permanent magnets or it could have a wound field, as we will see in this next slide here. <coughs> so you can see here the structure. Uh, here, here is an exploded view. Uh, we have permanent magnets uh, on the stator and on the rotor we have what is called an armature winding and uh, uh, commutators and brushes here. So the commutators here and then brushes over here. And uh, as far as the, the stator is concerned, uh, it may have permanent magnets as shown here, uh, which produce the, the field flux, uh, phi sub f, or this field flux could be produced by having a winding on the, uh, on the stator. So as shown here, there are two poles and uh, there's a stator winding through which we pass a DC current, which produces this field flux phi sub f. So there are two ways to produce this uh, uh, field flux, and by and large, we'll look at this permanent magnet type uh, DC machine here. So like I mentioned to you, the rotor has uh, armature windings, and then is, it has commutators and brushes, and for different applications, this uh, rotor may uh, look different here. But uh, let's just look at the basic principle here that uh, first uh, from the stator, uh, this uh, field flux density in the air gap is established. Let's say this is the field flux phi sub f over here, uh, whether you look at uh, the picture on the left or on the right. And uh, if you think of this as theta equal to zero and measure theta from here, we can plot this uh, field flux density uh, B sub f, which is uh, pretty flat, except 90 degrees when theta is 90 or 270 degrees. <clears throat> and then uh, let's think of this very primitive 
a machine uh, where it has only uh, one coil on the rotor and uh, this coil is connected to these two commutator segments uh, S1 and S2 and uh, there is a break in between those and uh, they are connected to uh, these commutator segments connect to uh, two stationary brushes and uh, these are B1 and B2. And let's say there is current IA which is uh, flowing between these two brushes over here. And uh, <coughs> uh, then we have, uh, looking from this side, uh, we have this uh, uh, terminal 1 and this is 1 prime over here and then there is a back end for this coil here just to uh, make the picture straight here. And so you can see here that uh, <coughs> Uh, in this position of the rotor, uh, there is a force and a torque uh, that is produced on, uh, on this coil here. And if this coil is rotating, uh, or this rotor is rotating at some speed E sub A, uh, I'm sorry, omega M, then here's the induced EMF here. Okay. So now this uh, uh, rotor has rotated, let's say, 90 degrees. And in this very primitive structure, uh, you know, the, these uh, two commuter segments are shorted by brushes. So, theoretically speaking, there is no current in these conductors. <coughs> uh, but uh, 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 also, you know, there is no induced voltage uh, across uh, these uh, brushes here. So, so, that's the situation around 90 degrees. <coughs> and then uh, this uh, rotor has rotated. Uh, uh, by 180 degrees now and you can see that uh, what used to be this coil side 1 is over here and what used to be coil side 1 prime is over here and uh, again you can see that uh, uh, the, <laughs> the, the current here now is uh, uh, going into 1 prime and is coming out of 1 whereas uh, in here the current was going into 1 and coming out of 1 prime. So, the main thing to note here is that even though the direction of current at the terminals of these brushes has not changed, the, the current through the coil itself is reversing. Okay? And uh, the other thing to note is that, uh, uh, that the induced EMF in this coil is also AC. So, this current, this induced EMF is positive as well as negative, but uh, this uh, commutator brush combination is acting like a mechanical rectifier. So, at the terminals, uh, at the brushes here, E sub A is always positive with this uh, polarity shown over here. <coughs> okay, and you can see here also the torque here is uh, always positive with this direction of current and the speed of, uh, a, a, for this direction of current. <coughs> so, this, uh, uh, the previous uh, arrangement was too primitive. Uh, we really should look at a, for example, a four coil example here. We will not go into the details except to show uh, that uh, the current here coming uh, from the electrical system flowing through the brushes has two parallel paths. Okay? And similarly, the, the voltage that is induced is uh, <coughs> really the sum of the voltage is induced in uh, half the conductors because there are two parallel paths here. So, let us leave it at that and uh, let us skip this example here and uh, let us summarize this here that I sub A coming from the electrical system uh, flowing through the brushes, it divides equally between two parallel circuits. And the torque produced on each conductor has the same direction and uh, of course, the direction of current determines the direction <coughs> of torque. Uh, now, the induced voltages in each circuit is equal to the sum of voltage induced, but uh, in e each circuit, there are only half the conductors. And uh, polarity of induced EMF, of course, depends upon the direction of rotation. So, from here we can see 
that the net torque produced is given by this expression where everything is constant except for the current. So we can say that there is a voltage constant KT <coughs> and similarly the induced voltage across the, the brushes is uh, given by uh, this expression here where uh, is everything is constant so let's call it a voltage constant KE and uh, except for the speed omega sub m over here. So you can see the electromagnetic torque is proportional to the current and uh, the induced EMF is proportional to the speed of rotation. And in MKS unit, these two constants have the same numeric value. As you can see from uh, the quantity, quantities that make up this, these two constants here. <coughs> And uh, the other thing is that, uh, uh, you know, when you have currents flowing through the rotor conductors, uh, we have rotor flux. So initially the stereo flux was uh, the reason why we had, uh, 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 we have to have stereo flux. But once we have currents in the rotor, uh, armature winding, then we have the rotor flux. So it's the combination of these two which gives us a resultant flux, which is our distorts this uh, <coughs> flux distribution as shown here. But if we ignore saturation, then it, the expressions that we came up with, uh, they still hold for the torque as well as for the flux, uh, as far as uh, for the torque as well as for uh, the induced EMF. Uh, and the reason is that uh, uh, this increased flux here is uh, causing more induced EMF and more torque uh, which is compensated for lower flux over here, which is reducing the induced EMF and uh, reducing the torque on certain conductors. So overall, without uh, saturation, they compensate each other, <coughs> and there's no, no difference here. The other thing to note here is that uh, uh, this effect of comp uh, armature reaction can be avoided by a compensating winding, as shown here, and we will not go into the details of that. <coughs> so the equivalent circuit for this uh, DC machine uh, is shown over here, uh, which shows that uh, you know we have this voltage at the terminals of uh, uh, this DC machine, and uh, this current IA is uh, drawn uh, from this uh, DC source, and uh, uh, the induced EMF within the machine is proportional to the speed of rotation. And you can see that uh, the armature winding has a resistance, Ra, and in the inductance L sub A. So the electrical circuit would consist of, will give us this equation here. And then the electromagnetic torque that is produced is uh, whatever current is drawn times the torque constant K sub T. And we can also write the electromechanical equation where the, the acceleration d omega m dt is given by the difference of the electromagnetic torque and the load torque that is opposing this electromagnetic torque uh, divided by the inertia of the combined system, assuming that uh, <coughs> there's no friction here. But that could be included as well. So here are the characteristics shown for, for steady state, uh, uh, under the steady state condition, where the rotational speed is plotted as a function of uh, electromagnetic torque for different applied voltages, uh, VA1, VA2, and so on. And you can see that uh, this uh, speed torque characteristic is, uh, <coughs> it would be horizontal uh, if there was uh, no drop due to the voltage drop due to the resistance of the armature winding. Otherwise, there is slight droop over here. So you can see that IA, of course, is uh, given by the the electromagnetic torque that this motor is required to generate divided by the, the torque constant and the speed is given by the applied voltage uh, minus the drop across the armature resistance divided by the voltage constant here. So in, in summary, uh, we have seen how uh, we can classify these DC machines and we have looked at structure, the operating principle, uh, just a little bit about armature reaction, and we also have looked at the DC machine 
Ecoline Circuit.